Wayne, Nebraska. A humid day in October 2013. A day like many others, but this day would be different. Soon, storm clouds arrived on the horizon. Many lives would be changed before the day would end. Dude, that thing's a mile wide right now. An EF4 tornado took aim at the small town, bringing with it winds over 166 miles per hour. This is a very, very dangerous situation. Uh, the National Weather Service here calling it a life-threatening situation. In the blink of an eye, the city also known as Wayne, America, would be changed forever. Heartbreaking. Just get the feeling that you've been punched in the gut. He's literally like this, saying it's all gone. But people in this city are strong, resilient, and determined. Somebody was watching out for us. Tonight, KTIV brings you a special edition of News 4 at 6. Stories from several in Wayne who went through the tornado. Their stories of hope and determination to build back better. This is from heartbreak to healing. The Wayne, Nebraska tornado, 10 years later. Here's KTIV's Matt Breen, Ron DeMars. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of News 4 at 6. I'm Matt Breen. And I'm Chief Meteorologist Ron DeMars. Friday, October 4th, 2013, began like any other fall day. It was the end of the work week, and many were looking forward to a weekend of nice weather. But as the workday was winding down, Mother Nature was winding up. Just before 5.30 p.m., an EF4 tornado, which had formed just south of Wayne, slammed into several farms. As it made its way northeast, it tracked toward the city's business park, just missing the heart of town, including Wayne State College, where thousands of students lived. Still, the tornado tore through the city's business park and the airport in minutes. Tonight, we look back on that fateful day to relive the storm through the eyes of those whose lives it changed forever and to learn how they've come back better and stronger. That night, I was right here bringing our viewers the latest warnings as the storms moved through Siouxland. You could see there was going to be a severe weather setup for that day, but I don't think you always know exactly the amount of um, of severe weather you're going to get from it or, or the fact that there could be multiple tornadoes all touching down in the KTIV viewing area at the same time at times. The moisture, the instability, there was a warm front lifting its way into the area. So everything was there to kind of cause the spin that you're as concerned about with tornado formation. And um, obviously as the day went along, that all came very true. Once you see where the atmosphere is most unstable, the storms get going, okay, then it's like, okay, Mother Nature's dealt her hand, How's this going to go from here? The brand new information is that it sounds like there could be a decent sized tornado on the ground right here in this area. Where there's a storm spotter out there about six miles to the south of Wayne, Nebraska. That would leave him about here. And he's saying about one mile to his west is where he is seeing a tornado. All of a sudden, this thing touched the ground almost immediately. This was being reported as a large destructive tornado and it was moving to the northeast. So at that point, we knew Wayne was in its path, for example, and it's just all about the mode of how are we going to keep everybody safe. And this is a classic signature. We talk about the comma signature. That is what it is. So folks, this is a very, very dangerous situation. Uh, National Weather Service here calling it a life-threatening situation. It's funny, I think when you're looking at radar, you're kind of uh, doing it as a meteorologist. And you're saying, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Hey, this could be a tornado. You start getting the reports that, hey, this is a large, dangerous tornado. And I think it's when you get those first reports of damage. Okay, damage has been done. Well, if damage is being done, well, people's lives are probably being threatened or people are being injured. And it, it does uh, affect me as a, as a human, as an individual. I hear those kinds of reports, and I do. I literally get a pit in my stomach. I, I do right now as I'm talking about it even. Sometimes when you get the, this kind of a thing going on in a hook echo, sometimes we call that a debris ball, meaning there's potentially debris up in this storm creating what the, the returns that you are seeing right here. So we have a confirmed tornado on the ground. You kind of have to deal with that on a human level when, while you are covering the storm. It's like, okay, I have a lot of important information to get out, but wow, I'm really concerned about these people, and I hope this isn't as bad as it's sounding right now. And so you have so many thoughts going through your head. You're, you're wondering, okay, have a lot of people been injured, or did this go just southeast of town? Did we get lucky? There are so many things that you're thinking about, but you've got to kind of stay on task and say, okay, where's the storm now? We've got to keep the next people safe and, and where it's going to the next community.
At one point, it really did look like it was right over Wayne, Nebraska. So our, our hopes and our prayers are with you right now. At the end of the day, I, I think you're asking yourself, did we do enough? Were we on fast enough? D did we give people the information that they needed to stay safe? And you just, you just really hope you did. Knowing that the weather would take a turn, storm chasers were in northeast Nebraska that day tracking the storm. One chaser, he went above and beyond to warn people to get to safety as that tornado approached. First alert meteorologist Kat Taylor joins us now in the studio and brings us this part of the story. Matt and Ron, storm chasers provide essential information in times of severe weather. Oftentimes, they're the people on the ground who first spot the tornadoes as they form. One chaser saw the Wayne tornado on the ground and did everything he could to urge people to seek shelter. Dude, that thing's a mile wide right now. That thing's a mile wide. That was storm chaser Matt Phelps and video he shot as he was chasing that afternoon. He, along with Bill Minos and Donovan Gruner, watched the tornado form get larger and bear down on Wayne that Friday night 10 years ago. Phelps from the car tried to warn onlurkers, trying to get a glimpse of the tornado as it approached Wayne. The tornado, big, there's a mile wide tornado coming this way. Get inside. get inside, it's a mile wide. After warning residents, the chase team drove by portions of the city that would be destroyed moments later. I spoke to Matt Phelps leading up to today's anniversary, and he said he didn't hear sirens sounding as they drove into town, and he said he felt like he had a responsibility to alert those people. Responsibility and a job he carried out very well. Kat, thank you. The tornado traveled 18 miles, cutting a path diagonally through Wayne. One of the first in its path, the Cruzmark family farm. Matt, Tracy, and their three young daughters took shelter as that twister tore their home apart. Well, that day was actually a lot like you're seeing today, but a lot more humid. Clouds that were just kind of moving in different directions. Tracy Cruzmark was driving home that afternoon and would soon learn those clouds hid a destructive secret. On my drive home, I heard it on the radio that there was possibility of severe storms. Tracy's husband, Matt, was home at their acreage south of Wayne and turned on the TV. I remember Ron DeMar saying, this is a very situ serious situation. So folks, this is a very, very dangerous situation. Uh, National Weather Service here calling it a life-threatening situation. And that kind of hit me because I said, girls, let's go downstairs. Let's get in the tornado shelter. With the girls and Tracy in the shelter, Matt went outside to try and spot the twister headed for his home. My wife kept saying, Matt, you need to get inside. And I said, I'll see it coming. And then she hollers out, they just said it's going to be a rain-wrapped tornado. You're not going to see it. You're just going to hear it. And at that moment, I said, run, because I could hear it destroying the house right up the hill. I grabbed the tornado shelter door pulled it shut and I seen the trees go flying by the basement window. I guess then I pulled the door shut and I think the house was gone. After the tornado had passed, Matt opened the door and was shocked by what he saw. I just remember opening the door slowly. I could see daylight. The house was gone. I remember thinking we had one standing wall in our house. It was kind of in the middle of the house and we had one standing wall, but Otherwise, you know, no vehicles, no barns. It, you know, it was just a lot of stuff everywhere. When the sun rose the next morning, the cruise marks returned to the rubble that was once their home, and they wept. We came back. We both lost it. Sad for what they had lost. But then everybody showed back up. We went about our day. Grateful for the hundreds of volunteers who came to clear debris and search for anything they could salvage. It wasn't so much what are we going to do just because I knew people would help take care of us, but looking around, what do you do to get all that stuff back? Yeah. The cruise marks stayed with family for a while. One good Samaritan even took his home, which was for sale, off the market and let the family stay there. That was great. I mean, one of the best phone calls we could get. 19 months after the tornado took everything, 
The cruise marks moved into their new home, built just a few yards from the spot where the old one once stood. When the cruise marks built their new home, they made sure it had one special feature. A tornado shelter and a really good one. Concrete, walls, ceiling, heavy, heavy steel door. And it's going to be really safe. So the next time severe weather strikes, the cruise marks can weather the storm again. And Ron, I asked Matt Cruzmark specifically if he thought there was a reason why he and his family survived. He told me to live life to its fullest every day. I think I was immediately in shock. I, I couldn't say anything. And here's my husband, and he's literally like this, saying it's all gone. I took two steps toward the door, heard it coming, took two steps back the other way, and the next thing I remember was the roof went off. That tornado decimated Wayne's Business Park. Coming up next on this special edition of News 4 at 6, we return to two of the businesses hit hardest to learn how they rebuilt from the rubble. Stay with us. And welcome back to this special edition of News 4 at 6. Wayne's Business Park took a direct hit from that EF4 tornado 10 years ago tonight. Back then, Sand Creek Post and Beam was celebrating nine years in business and looking forward to many more. The tornado radically changed those plans in minutes. KTIV's Katie Koppel has the story. Len Dickinson and Jewel Gaylor launched Sand Creek Post and Beam in Wayne, Nebraska, building beautiful timber barns and homes that have been shipped across the country. We will be uh, having our 20th anniversary next year, which we're pretty excited about, especially considering that almost came to a screeching halt 10 years ago. On October 4th, 2013, it all nearly came to an end. About mid-afternoon, we kind of saw the weather start to turn, and as the afternoon progressed, it only got worse. We're looking to the west, it's blue sky to the south, big rain cloud, and you could not see a tornado. It was that rain and shrouded. Len and Jewel were home near Pilger when the storm hit. They got the call, leaving their home so fast they didn't shut the front door. That we couldn't get any closer than about a block. Walked through the debris, got onto the property, and uh, I think I was immediately in shock. I, I couldn't say anything, and here's my husband, and he's literally like this, saying it's all gone. Um, and then Brandon came and he came over to us and said, we just went through the, the entire buildings. Everyone, everyone got away safely. I'd never felt like that before. It wasn't really fear, it was just, how could something like this happen so quickly without any kind of notice? The storm was unexpected. It was a long time a year for a tornado. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, it was pure devastation. It wasn't just our facility that was down, but there was multiple buildings completely leveled to the ground, piles of rubble. You know, there was sticks stuck between a rim and a tire of a pickup and buildings completely gone. and. Um, and then panes of glass sitting on a shelf that hadn't been touched and the whole building's gone, you know, next to it. I had put about 20 buckets in my pickup figuring we had to pick up hardware all over the place. We got here and both ends, the north ends of the building, were still intact. Len and Jewel called their management team to figure out what's next, but they were met with another surprise. Everybody came, every single employee came. And I was, I was shocked. With everything destroyed, they had to find a way to keep production going to fill customer orders. And we didn't have a single customer cancel. People were very understanding. And we split up and we ended up running production out of three different facilities. One out of Pender, Nebraska, one out of Wakefield, and then we still did some shipping and receiving here at this facility after the cleanup. Ten years later, Sand Creek Post and Beam has grown. Now called Timberline, they still reside in Wayne's Business Park, building timber structures that harness the beauty, sustainability, and strength of not just the wood they use, but the community they've built. I really felt that we were like the phoenix rising out of the ashes. In Wayne, Nebraska, Katie Koppel, KTIV News 4.
Len, Jewel, and the team at Timberline mark the anniversary of the tornado each year with a Toast the Tornado Party to celebrate the obstacles they've overcome in the last 10 years. Now, just a well, that afternoon, I had just returned from Norfolk. On October 4th, 2013, Dave Olson was the general manager of Grossenberg Implement. He'd just come back from a sales call. And we were all in the sales area, and we had heard that there was maybe a tornado at Hoskins, but all we saw here was a really good thunderstorm. It wasn't just a thunderstorm. One of our salesmen had left and he tried to get back into town, decided it was raining too hard and came back. He came to the back door and tried to get in and I went over to let him in and I couldn't get the door open because the wind was blowing so hard. I told him, motioned to him to go to one of the other doors. I turned around and walked back toward my office, thought I gotta check on that guy one more time. I took two steps toward the door, heard it coming, took two steps back the other way, and the next thing I remember was the roof went off. Debris hit Olson in the head, knocking him out. At the same time, Don Hypes was one of three people taking shelter in the men's restroom. I didn't fathom that it was a tornado at the time, I don't think, but in the men's restroom it was just loud and noisy and a lot of shaking around. After the storm passed, Hypes couldn't believe his eyes. We came out of the restroom and the showroom that we looked at first was pretty well beat up. But then we looked out the front door and there was no glass, there was no doors, there was no anything. Olson was unconscious for about five minutes. But when he woke up... The whole sales edition was gone except for the uh, south wall. And there was a bunch of pickups that had been piled up against that. But otherwise, it came over the wall and it, it took the whole edition. And it was, it, was, it was all gone. But Olson and Hypes were alive. And so were 23 others inside the dealership that the tornado tore apart. Somebody was watching out for us. By the next morning, owner Barry Grossenberg had already started planning to rebuild. His first comment when I saw him was, I've always wanted to build a dealership from the ground up. You know, you're going to get your chance, Barry, because there's nothing there. By noon the same day, Grossenberg already had a building to move into. After all, October is harvest season, a bad time for an implement dealership to be out of business. Monday, everybody was just doing something to move out of here and move to the temporary location. Eleven months later, Grossenberg's new dealership opened in Wayne, right on the spot where the old one once stood. Everybody talks about the Midwest uh, farm, you know, work ethic and stuff, and I guess that just, you know, that's what we like to think of. Building a future for Grossenberg from the rubble of the past. After the storm, Olson and owner Barry Grossenberg sought the advice of an implement dealer in Kansas who lost his business to a tornado. The owner told them to build something on site as soon as they could. That way, he said, people would still know they were in business. And that's just what happened. Now, Wayne wasn't the only town targeted by tornadoes that day. When we come back, we look at some of the other communities in Mother Nature's path a decade ago. Stay with us. Now, Wayne wasn't the only Siouxland community touched by tornadoes on October 4th, 2013. Several other twisters touched down, including an EF2 in Macy, Nebraska, an EF-1 in Sloan, Iowa, another EF-4 in Woodbury County, Iowa, and of course, several others. KTIV's cameras visited several of those communities in the days after the storms. In the Windstone neighborhood in South Dakota, several homes were damaged. The roof torn off of one, the garage blown away at a house down the street. North of Sloan, Iowa, one home was a total loss after a tornado ripped through that community. And several farms and homes were damaged in Pearson, Iowa, when a twister touched down near that community as well. These are just some of the roughly dozen confirmed tornadoes that hit Siouxland during that afternoon tornado outbreak. Thankfully, no major injuries or deaths were reported from that outbreak 10 years ago, October 4th, 2013. We'll be right back with a look at your local news and weather after this. 
Welcome back. The two major carbon capture pipelines proposed for the tri-state region hit snags in their plans this week. Summit Carbon Solutions says it plans to refile for a new permit from South Dakota's Public Utilities Commission. That's after the PUC denied Summit's permit last month. They said route, the route conflicted with ordinances in four counties in the pipeline's path. Summit states it will plan a new route before resubmitting. And in Iowa, Navigator's Heartland Greenway Carbon Capture Pipeline has had its permit process suspended in that state. This comes after the company requested that pause from the Iowa Utility board last week. Navigator has also suspended its negotiations for land easements in South Dakota. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Siouxland has announced the route for its annual holiday tour of homes fundraiser. This year that fundraiser will be on the north side of Sioux City and will let people tour five different homes that are professionally decorated for the holiday season. It's the biggest fundraiser of the year for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Siouxland. The organization pairs adults or bigs with kids known as littles in need of a mentor or a friend. For more information on touring the homes, just check out the story at KTIV.com. And we, we had a little bit of severe weather last night that did bring temperatures down today. A big cold front came through, but we have another one coming in. This time generally going to be dry with the exception of a few sprinkles, but it's going to bring down temperatures well below normal for this time of year. Our Black Ribbon Casino camera in downtown Sioux City showing generally a clear sky with just a little bit of some low lying cloud cover there. We are going to see some of that increase again overnight at times, but uh, overall temperatures are going to cool down significantly into the overnight. Now temperatures right now are at 64 in Storm Lake, 67 in Sioux City, 69 in Tacoma. We're not far off from our high temperatures today officially in Sioux City at 69, uh, but we did see wind speeds out of the northeast uh, northwest generally today rather we are going to see a switch to the southwest that's going to actually keep us just a smidge warmer than we would normally be overnight but the drop is coming now a wind gust have dropped from the where they were earlier today and actually significantly from where they were earlier yesterday but we're going to see those pick up again tomorrow now dew points are fairly low we are going to see these decrease with our secondary cold front coming in overnight tomorrow night and that's going to drop uh, not only the temperature but also the humidity completely flatlining it for the most part. Future track showing that as we go through tomorrow, we do have a chance for tomorrow night into early Friday morning. As the sprinkles, maybe a stray shower, depending on when this actually comes in. Time is going to be key because the air is so dry, our air temperatures have to be lower to actually get that uh, rain to the ground. So a lot of it might evaporate before it reaches the ground. Otherwise, we're clearing out for much of the day on Friday. So here's a look at your forecast tonight. Overnight lows in the upper 40s to low 50s, mostly clear with some cloud cover here and there for tomorrow. Daytime highs in the mid 60s, so a lot like today, just a little bit cooler. Breezy conditions returning, though. Those wind gusts up to 30 miles an hour. Below average highs for this time of year are averages in the low 70s. So for the 10 day forecast, you'll see a significant drop for Friday as that cold front comes in. We'll see daytime highs in the low 50s. It is going to be windy on Friday, maybe a few sprinkles in the morning, but look at that overnight low on Saturday morning An overnight low of 32. So if you live up toward the Minnesota state line, maybe in the 20s. So we'll have to keep an eye on that freezing potential as well as widespread frost possible on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Otherwise, we return to the 60s Sunday and Monday and back to the 70s on Tuesday, Wednesday. Next week, though, looks like fall is going to continue. Ron, Matt. Pat, thank you, and thank you for joining us for this special edition of News 4 at 6. And a special thank you to the community of Wayne, Nebraska for opening their arms wide to allow our cameras to come in and document how that community has grown and prospered since that terrible day 10 years ago. If you missed any of this broadcast or want to see these stories again, just head to our website. That's KTIV.com. And to help you stay weather aware, no matter where you are, you can download our free First Alert weather app as well. We're up to the minute alerts, current radar, and your latest forecast. We'll, of course, be back with the latest news, weather, and sports on News 4 at 10. In the meantime, if you want to check out those stories once again, go to KTIV.com. For Chief Meteorologist Ron DeMars, I'm Matt Breen. Good night.